What's up, everybody? Welcome to my YouTube channel. You have just reached the Kim's Reaction Show. If you came across this channel or this video, please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share. Put your notification bell on all so you won't miss when I upload any kind of content. Um, today, we're talking about how, how Times Square became, became a giant tourist gap. Cheddar explains. Go subscribe to their channel. I'm about to subscribe right now. Subscribe. Notification bell on all. I'm going to be doing a reaction to this. I just did a reaction uh, reaction video to um, why there are so many rats in New York City. I'm editing that video right after I'm done recording this. I'm going to upload that video, get it to you guys, edit this video, get it to you guys so y'all can have multiple videos to watch and enjoy. So please, if you came across this channel, the Kim's Reaction Show. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share. Put your notification bell on all so you won't miss any content that I upload. Let's get right to the video. How, how Times Square became a giant tourist trap, which I honestly believe it did. Over the years, I live in New York City. Now it's like, oh, wow. That's what, like... That's a tourist trap. Yeah, that, that I guess when people never probably visited New York or like America for that chance or yeah, New York, they swear 42nd Street is like where to be. And it's like, no, you will go broke on 42nd Street. Everything there is expensive. You'll pay almost five dollars just for a hot dog, three dollars for a can of soda. You could come up to 125th and pay a dollar 25 for the same hot dog a dollar for the same can of pepsi like but let's get to the video new york new york a city packed with iconic sites the statue of liberty central park the empire state building and times square with its brightly lit billboards, costume characters, and Broadway theater, it is known as the crossroads of the world. Up until the pandemic, Times Square was a place where 50 million tourists flocked annually, and locals avoided daily. However, just over 30 years ago, Times Square was a very different place. Yes, it was. Times Square was a very very different place 25 years yes they used to have like these the the sex um where you could go and watch 25 cents rated videos they would have porn shops stripped oh man 42nd street back in like the early 2000s like late 90s around there was like more sexual than anything that was like what the villages with all the sex stores and stuff. That was 42nd Street. I even remember the Internet Cafe. If anybody's from New York, we had, before Internet was really available in people's homes, they had a big cafe. Now that's where um, Dave and Buster's is at. Dave and Buster's is there. The movie theaters is there. But that's where the, uh, the Internet Cafe used to be. They used to have Virgin Records down there. I remember going down there and buying a 50 Cent um, Get Rich or Die Trying album the same day it came out. Long line waiting for that. But anyway, let's get back to the video. It was not the same 25 years, like a couple. Yeah, it wasn't the same. It's changed a lot. There were no Mickey Mouse characters hawking photos or hordes of family tourists. Instead, the area was crime-ridden and peddled low-level entertainment. Rolling Stone branded it the sleaziest block in America. Mm -hmm. So how did it evolve from that to one giant tourist trap? Well, for one, the city brought in the best in the business. In the early 1800s, New York City was expanding. In order to keep up with the growing population, Commissioners laid out a grid plan made up of streets and avenues north of Houston Street. However, there was one diversion in the design. Bloomingdale Road, a Native American trail, cut diagonally across the grid layout. But instead of eliminating it, planners incorporated it. Later known as Broadway, the street created squares at every intersection with a north-south avenue. One of these, located above 7th and 42nd, was called Long Acre Square and it was known for horse trading. Throughout the 1800s, the square became a hotbed for theaters and entertainment. And by the end of the century, the first of what was to be many bright lights began to glow. 
as it continued to grow in popularity, the city made arrangements for a subway stop at Long Acre. It was slowly on its way to becoming a central part of the city. Spotting an opportunity for high foot traffic, the New York Times decided to move its headquarters into the square in 1904. It foresaw the area as a future cultural hub and wanted to create its mark on the city. The district was quickly evolving, so the mayor renamed the area from Long Acre Square to Times Square. On New Year's Eve 1904, the paper celebrated the opening of its new building with fireworks as they counted down to midnight. The ceremony was a hit amongst New Yorkers, and the tradition stuck. Soon, new buildings began appearing and electric signs lit the area. The New York Times began projecting sporting events and cartoons on a wall above the square, drawing in more crowds. It became an area for celebration and parades. By the end of the decade, all transit services had a stop in the square, allowing access for locals and tourists alike. But the energetic atmosphere didn't last long. In 1929, the Great Depression hit. The stock market crash and Times Square was hit hard. Theater attendance hit record lows. Soon, vacant buildings lined the block. Desperate to stay alive in the struggling economy, many transformed into cheap restaurants and entertainment venues showing sexually explicit films and shows. The square, stripped of all its glory, stayed this way for years to come. Yeah, 50, I mean, 42nd Street was like the peep lounge area and stuff. It was back when I was growing up, 42nd Street was not for kids, not the way it is now. Times Square goes into a pretty steep decline, such that by the 1960s and 70s, it really is associated with sex work drugs, you know, it's the image of Times Square that's captured in movies like Taxi Driver and Midnight Cowboy. It is just fully a district of vice and illegal activity. As the city enters into a period of serious fiscal crisis in the 1970s, there's really just not much that can be done. By 1984, over 2,300 crimes were reported in this single block. 20% which were serious felonies, the highest rate in the city. And while there were several initial jump starts to revitalize the area, none ever got off the ground due to lawsuits and recessions. There were other developers who felt as though building these giant towers in Times Square would kind of poach their, their rentals and, you know, sort of de decrease the value of their properties. And then there were those who were arguing that there was a First Amendment issue at stake here as the sex industry was being kind of stifled and um, smothered, that it was really important to sort of have sort of free speech and free opportunity in Times Square and that this was some kind of conservative move to push out the, the industries that were thriving in Times Square. So how did it evolve from that to one giant tourist trap? In the early 1990s, development really kicked into gear when one man started negotiations on a deal that would set the groundwork for a new era in Times Square. The new Amsterdam Theater was in dire need of restoration. So Mayor David Dinkins convinced Walt Disney to take over the deteriorating building by offering a loan from the state in 1992. And while the deal wasn't finalized by the time he left office, Dinkins played a large part in the deal, and it eventually paved the way for more businesses like hotels, museums, and major media companies to open their doors around the square. After Dinkins, the next mayor, Rudy Giuliani, implemented new policing tactics and controversially banned adult entertainment in the square. He also worked with a nonprofit group to resurrect more Broadway theaters. The crime rate dropped swiftly, and by 1995, only 60 felonies were reported on 42nd Street that year. These changes encouraged more visitors to Times Square. It was becoming a must-see spot in New York. 
In 2009, the city created pedestrian plazas along certain parts of the area and banned cars. And by the next year, as the final touches of redevelopment were being made, tourism was up 74% compared to 1993, marking the end of an era of growth often referred to as the Disneyfication of Times Square. And while the typical New Yorker may have taken the longer route to avoid the area, Times Square was driving about 15% of the city's economy. It seemed as if the neighborhood had a bright future ahead. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Breaking news tonight, President Trump. Let me tell you guys something. I knew this pandemic was real once when I seen Broadway, 42nd Street shut down. I was scheduled to go to work on the day that Broadway got shut down. That was, I think, March 13th around there, March 16th, but it was in March of 2020. I called my job. I said, if Times Square is closing down because of this COVID-19, you know, the 19, take me off the schedule until we figure out what's going on. Yeah, so that's when I knew it was serious. Once when I seen 42nd Street shut down, I said 42nd Street don't close, don't shut down for nobody. Them lights stay on all year, all year long. They don't shut down nothing. When Broadway shut down, I already knew it was serious. But let's get back to this story declaring the coronavirus a national emergency. The state takes extraordinary steps to stop coronavirus crisis from intensifying. After taking the initial brunt of the coronavirus, New York City was shut down in March of that year, along with Broadway, hotels, and several retail stores in Times Square. By April, the daily pedestrian account was down by over 90% in comparison to the year before. It had become a ghost town. So what does the future hold for Times Square? Well, if history is any indicator, the neighborhood is in constant evolution. As vaccine rollout increases in 2021, there seems to be glimmers of hope. Pop-up Broadway performances are now allowed for passerbys to view in the square. And daily pedestrian count is up from peak COVID times. One year later, the city is slowly reopening, and perhaps Times Square will once again too. Thanks for watching. If you so, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, how Times Square became a giant tourist trap. This was actually done June 10th of 2021. So I want to see what they're saying about New York now. Um, we're, I'm going to do some um, other reactions later on today. But if you came across this channel, this is the Kim's Reaction Show. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share. Make sure that your notification bell is on all so that when I upload content, you won't miss out. Have a great day.